Welcome to Booze in the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and it's great to have you here today. We're going to make a yellow parrot. Now, this cocktail is a classic style cocktail that came out in the Prohibition era. However, I'm going to use a modern version of the recipe. And I got that recipe off of punchdrinks.com, which is a fantastic spot to get cocktail information if you like that kind of thing. But if you're here, you obviously like making cocktails. So go check them out when you need to. Uh, but I do also have a little bit of a rant about the way the uh, presentation of the cocktail is for that, and I'll save that for a little bit later. But you can originally find this cocktail in the 1922 book, Cocktails, How to Mix Them by Robert Vermeer, and you can find it on page 50. The next time you really see it in print is in Harry Craddock's Savoy Cocktail Book from 1930 on page 179, and the recipes are exactly the same. Equal measures, shake, and fine strain. However, the addition or the variation recipe that I'm going to use today comes from punchdrink.com. Again, it's an equal measures cocktail, but the way we mix this is different. We're going to stir this. And you know what? There's something about this that just, uh, not the recipe, but how it's garnished, it kind of just tweaks me in the brain. So grab yourself a stirring vessel. And we're going to start with a little bit of absinthe. Now I'm using lucid absinthe. It is 62% ABV and we're going to use a total of one ounce or 30 milliliters. Your second ingredient is yellow chartreuse. Now, if you don't have yellow chartreuse, you could use something like Strega. Uh, Strega and this are very close, but slightly different. Strega has a bit more of the anise flavor versus this. This also has a higher ABV count at 43%, where Strega is 40%. So this is actually building into a really strong cocktail. But we're going to use the same amount of one ounce or 30 mils. Your third ingredient calls for an apricot liqueur. At least the recipe does on punchdrink.com. However, the original two recipes that I cited earlier actually calls for apricot brandy. So I'm going to use that one only because that will lower the alcohol content a little bit as this bowl's apricot brandy is 24% versus uh, the apricot brandy or liqueur that I have, it's 43%. But we're gonna use the same amount of one ounce or 30 mils. Now the apricot brandy will actually have a little bit more sweetness to it, which will help to balance this cocktail out a little bit. Now, what we have to do for this cocktail, rather than shake it like the original two, is to actually stir this with some ice. But the recipe calls for you to actually stir this for like a minute straight. And that's a lot of stirring, so let's get to it. All right. Now, my only complaint about the recipe that I find on punchdrink.com is that specifically it calls for a five-sided Libby glass or a, uh, a chilled Sazerac glass. And one of the things I don't like about that is the fact that I don't have one of those glasses and you may not have one of those glasses. So you should be able to choose the glass of your choice because let's be honest, I'm in a bar at home. You're probably in a bar at home. And if you want to take this to a place where you work and make it, you can serve it however you want. So just add this and enjoy it. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is the fact that it's really starting to change color because of the Lucian effect. Now, if you're not familiar with the uh, Lucian effect, it's also known as the Uzo effect. Uh, what that means is absinthe, like Uzo, is a very, very high ABV spirit. But what this has is a bunch of non-soluble non compounds that are sort of held in place by that high alcohol content. Once you start to water it down, you get this milkiness and cloudiness. Those are those non-soluble compounds actually separating from the alcohol. Uh, and you get what looks like this, and it's really fantastic to look at. Uh, but our next point to this cocktail is literally just to drop it into the glass of your choice. Now we're going to put some fresh ice in here and the recipe that I read uh, calls for four to five cold cubes of ice, which, you know what? They're using the words cold with K-O-L-D. Really, truthfully, doesn't matter if they come from a certain style of ice cube tray, use whatever you got. Now, what we are going to do, however, is fine strain this directly into our glass. 
Now, truthfully, you don't need to fine strain this unless you're using cracked ice. Uh, but damn, that looks good. It looks just like a nice lemon cello. Oh, fantastic. Let's give it a try. So immediately I get that anise, that licorice smell. Mm. It's really good. You've got that licorice, absolutely. You have the herbal notes from the chartreuse, but because it's cooled down, it actually makes it a little bit more subtle and you get slight hints of that apricot brandy. If you like cocktails that are three ingredients and all booze, take a look right after the recipe card here.